As a plant collector, I get very excited when I get new plants. It doesn't matter if I find them at plant nurseries locally, big box stores, or if I have ordered them online. I'm very excited about my plants and I want to do everything that I can to ensure their success, that they come into my home and they thrive. Today I'm going to share with you my new plant routine. I try and do this every time I bring a plant into my home. So I'm going to share three new plants and three very different outcomes. The first, I'm going to show you my entire routine. And then the other two, it's going to be a kind of modified version so you can see why I make the decisions I make. And most important, hopefully it will help you to develop a new plant plan of your own. Hello and welcome to Peggy's Plants, coming to you from the Florida Keys. These four plants are from a recent unboxing. We're going to work with three of them today. When I get new plants in, one of the first things I do is check out that root, the root system. And a lot of times, I would say 90% of the time, I repot my plants. And I know a lot of people say don't do that. However, look at this Burl Marks Fantasy that I bought recently as a rooted plant. As you can see, it's a cutting with barely any roots. If you follow me at all, you're probably familiar with this um, Skindapsis Moonlight that I purchased, again, as a rooted plant. And as you'll see here, this plant too does not have much of a root system at all. And the stem is actually discolored. Had I left these plants in the pots, there's a good chance I would have lost these plants while I was waiting for them to acclimate. I've since rooted them and have no problems with these plants. They didn't go into shock, no problem at all. However, if I had waited and not repotted them, there's a very good chance that these plants would not be in my collection today. So one of the first things I usually do is repot. With that said, let's get started with one of the plants from the unboxing. And we're gonna start with this El Chaco Red Philodendron. Okay. This plant is in overall great condition. This is a plant that has been through the mail. I'm looking now to see if I see any pest or anything like that on the leaves. Um, it's a good looking plant. I have no complaints visually, but you really don't know what you're working with until you've seen the roots. Now I do see some roots above ground on this pot, um, on this plant. So I'm thinking that this plant is probably going to be root bound. And if it is, I'll definitely be repotting. I figure get everything done up front and then let the plant do its thing and I won't have to bother this plant anymore anytime soon. So I kind of am of the belief, let it go through everything all at once and then it's easy street. So checking this out and the soil looks fine. I don't see any pest or anything like that. It looks like good draining soil, but the roots are a little brown and it does seem to be root bound. I do see some white roots as well. So I'm going to give this plant the benefit of the doubt that everything's okay with it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and repot it. Now, I just use um, potting soil and perlite. I do cover that in one of my videos if you're interested in seeing what I use, but I keep things very simple. If I have leftover orchid bark from my orchids, I may throw that in there because I don't like to leave things sitting around long, but otherwise I keep things very simple with my plants. If this plant was not root bound and I didn't see as many brown roots as I do, I would have left this plant in this pot and gone on to the next step. Now I realize that this is a little against the grain for a lot of people um, because many people believe that you should never repot a new plant when you get it, that you should let it acclimate to your home first. And I understand that. My thinking behind this is I've had too many experiences where the plants were actually made, the whole pot of plants was made up of a lot of cuttings that were barely rooted. Or like the two examples I showed you earlier, um, where the plants basically had no roots and wouldn't have probably made it had I just treated it as a fully rooted plant. 
When I didn't repot my plants, I'm thinking back now at how many times a plant just kind of declined and you mark it off to, oh, it just didn't acclimate well, or it was dropping leaves because that was just part of the adjustment period. And once I started repotting um, my plants, I found that I had a lot less of those problems. And I think it's because this way I'm aware of what that root system look, looks like or the lack thereof. And um, like I said, I get everything done at once and then I leave the plant alone. Now, this is just what I do. I'm not saying this is what you should do, but I do encourage you to come up with some kind of routine for bringing new plants into your home. Now that I have this plant repotted, next step for me is using a systemic pesticide. And I do this on all of my plants. And it's you just sprinkle it on the top here, mix it into the top an inch or so of your soil, and then you water it in. And the way this works is the roots intake the water, which brings the systemic into the system of the plant. So when pests come and start feeding on that plant, nibbling on your leaves or stem or whatever, it kills the, the pest. So for me, I have so many plants and when things go wrong, they can go really wrong. And that is why I started using a systemic. My next step is hydrogen peroxide, a 3% hydrogen hydrogen peroxide and I mix a tablespoon of this with a cup of water I had some in my spray bottle here and I just spray down all surfaces of this plant and what that does is it actually also works as an insect control now the systemic is going to take a while to work and I don't need anything stronger because I don't see any evidence of this plant having any insect problem but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to spray down this plant and I'm going to spray down the soil. Hydrogen peroxide has antimicrobial, antifungal, and antibacterial properties. And it also kills pests on plants. I'll let that dry and that's it for plant number one. So moving to plant number two. Plant number two is an anthurium and waterburianum. And again, on the surface, everything looks good. I don't see anything of concern as far as pests or anything like that on any leaves. Doesn't look like anybody's been eating, but this pot is very heavy for the size and you can just look at it and see that it's very wet. And you never want to receive a plant that's very wet because you don't know how long it's been wet. Fortunately, this was ordered from a place here in Florida, so it was only in the mail for two days, but again, I still don't know how long it's been sitting in this soil. So I pulled it out of the pot and things aren't looking too good. I see a lot of dead roots. I see a lot of roots that look like a fine thread, meaning the outer sheath on the root is no longer there. I'm seeing a lot of brown roots. Um, fortunately, I do see some white tips as well, which means that there are some healthy roots on this plant. But this is one of those situations where the leaves, the plant itself, looks a lot better than the root system. With the amount of root rot going on with this plant, there's a good chance that if I just left this plant in the soil that it came in and just waited for it to dry out and waited for the plant to acclimate, there's a good chance that this plant might not make it. So I'm going to take it over to the sink, wash down these roots so I can get a better look at the roots and see what I'm really dealing with here. I prefer to spray the roots with water to remove the soil rather than doing it manually with my hands because I don't want to damage the roots any more than necessary. These roots were in really bad shape as you can see here. So what I ended up doing is I went through and just with my hands pulled off all of the dead roots, all of the hair like roots that you see here and left only the healthy roots. So this is what this plant is looking like about a week and a half later. I decided not to plant it in soil since it didn't have a very good root system and instead put it in the Lekka pellets. I have a video on that. I'll try to remember to link it above. But um, this way it can get stronger roots and just a larger root system. Now with all of that, the only thing I lost is this one leaf at the top 
and there's one at the bottom that I'm going to cut off that's yellow now. But as you can see, the roots are starting to grow already after a week and a half. You can also see um, in here some of the old root system that has continued to die off, which isn't unusual when you put them in LECA and they weren't in the greatest of shape, but I tried to leave any leaf, any roots, excuse me, that I thought might be viable. If you, as you know, any plants you buy in the mail, there's a chance that for a couple of weeks that they still may continue to, to decline. However, I think this plant has the best chance of making it now that the root rot has been addressed and seeing the new roots is very encouraging. So on to plant number three. And again, visually, this plant appears to be in very good condition. I'm giving it a good once over, looking for any evidence that this plant may have a pest problem, and I don't see any evidence of that. However, I did notice that this pot too was very heavy for the size, so I'm expecting that this soil is very wet as well. So once I took the plant out of the pot, took a look at these roots, um, they're not as bad as they appear at first glance. Unlike the plant before this, these roots seem to be viable. When I squeeze on them, they're not paper thin, they're not squishy or anything like that. So I did wash it down as well. Things looked pretty good. There were more, a lot more good roots than bad. So with this one, I decided to go ahead and pot it up. And after a week and a half, this is how this plant looks. I decided to pot it up in a plastic pot so that I can keep an eye on the roots and I'll be keeping an eye on this plant to see if there's any sign of decline and if so I'm going to suspect that there's more root rot and I will take care of it at that time. But as you can see at this time this plant is doing quite well and I expect that it will continue to do so. Because the roots on this plant were questionable and the plant prior to it looked so bad I decided to go back and repot this El Chaco Red because I didn't want to take a chance at all of losing this plant. I planted it in a plastic pot also, a clear one, so that I could check the roots periodically. And I have it up here on my shelf. It is under a grow light kind of, but off to the side and the leaves don't really get direct light from it. And as you can see, there's a new leaf coming up. So this plant appears to be very happy as do the other two. So that's my new plant routine. It's what works for me. I hope it helps you think about at least come up with some ideas of what will work for you and implement that so that you don't have pest problems and so that your plants have the best chance of thriving. That's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Take care. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.